I got this absolutely stunning to go straight from the coffee shop to the library when it opened. On Saturdays the library only opens at 10 which is slightly annoying so I was going to go straight there at 10 but I realised that I'd forgotten this tiny notebook so I've come back to my room to grab this. Um, this is a mini commonplace book that I'm using for my dissertation. I always keep this, well I meant to always keep this on my person and then if I think of anything while I'm talking to someone in a conversation or if I'm at an unrelated lecture I can jot it in this notebook. So it's to encourage synoptic thinking, draw connections between my dissertation project and other things that I'm learning about more broadly, which I think is the broad appeal and usefulness of commonplacing. I have got a video on commonplacing coming soon as well, but I want to film with some early modern commonplace books as part of the video, so I'm just trying to organise that at the moment. So this year I've used a mini Muji notebook like this for every single one of my essays, and while I'm working on it I just try to keep this in my bag at all times. So let's actually pop this in my bag. And now I can head off to the library to get some work done. This is my outfit of the day today. To say that I've been overthinking and stressed about this dissertation would be an understatement. I'm always a little surprised at how muddled my head gets when I have an assessment. I try and talk myself out of it, try and tell myself that it's not the most important thing in the world, that there are other things that matter to me, but I do always find myself falling into a trap of quote unquote overworking on essays. And I think it's partially an issue of caring a lot about what I'm working on. I mean, this project has been all year in the making. It's something I feel really strongly about, something I find fascinating and and in the final term, what we call Trinity Term at Oxford, this is the only thing we have to complete. So this is what I've been working on the entire time. It was week six when I filmed this, I believe, and I just finished an updated draft, which I was working through editing. So, so many people have been asking what it actually is that I'm working on, and um, my master's is specifically in early modern literature, so that's 1550 to 1700, and um, my dissertation is about childhood, constructions of childhood in early modern England, which is a fairly new and definitely exciting area of scholarship in early modern literature studies and there's some really, really cool work happening at the moment. So in particular my research is interested in child writings, so things that were written by actual children in the 17th century and in particular I'm interested in female children and girls and what they were writing. I will talk about this a little more in a video eventually, I'm sure, but intentionally I've kept it very vague this year when people ask like I haven't really given specifics and I haven't spoken about it that much because what I've learned from posting stuff on social media um, over the years is that it's really easy to get influenced by other people's opinions and and it's funny because on the one hand I would say that is incredibly important one of the most important things you can do the most valuable things you can do is have conversations about your topic talk about it with people on your course um, explain it to people I did my undergraduate dissertation on, on Lewis Carroll's letters and the intersection between his letters and his printed work so kind of reframing letters as a really important um, media form form of literature it's funny because I feel really strongly about this and really strongly about 
widening our definitions of writing beyond the canon but when I shared my topic and when I spoke about it in study with Muse I did lose confidence when people would tell me that it didn't count as real literature that it wasn't the kind of thing I should be writing about on an English degree and now I would very confidently very adamantly argue against that and, and say exactly what I just said but what I'm trying to illustrate is when you're doing a prolonged piece of writing when you've got a really important project there is going to be so much imposter syndrome so much self-doubt and you will doubt your topic, you will doubt your ideas, you will doubt yourself, even when you do really believe in what you're writing and you think it's important. Having confidence in a project is really, really key. One of my professors really stressed that to me this year, and I was worried about further decreasing my confidence if I shared it online. Anyway, um, I then left the library because I was going to meet some friends for lunch. Went to Salsa del Sol, which is actually my favourite lunch place in Oxford, so if you go to Oxford you should definitely go. They have this amazing salad bar and their sweet potato I think is the best sweet potato I've ever tried apart from the sweet potato at Jesus College because Jesus College does do very good sweet potatoes and it was really nice just chat and catch up and after that we went book shopping oh, that's good. <laughs> I just got back from lunch with my friends um, and we went book shopping too so I'm going to quickly show you the books I got. It's actually such a problem. I was joking about it before but there are so many bookshops in Oxford and I go book shopping so much with my friends like especially secondhand book shopping that I end up buying books. So I'm going to show you the books I got today. But I'm also not complaining because I'm collecting all of these books for my future library that I'm going to one day have. First of all, I got this absolutely stunning edition of The Importance of Being Earnest. And then I also got this, um, it's Castiglione's, I'm going to pronounce that wrong, it's an Italian etiquette guide for Renaissance gentlemen. I didn't buy this one but I got it from the library, I requested it to collect. This is Mental Health, Spirituality and Religion in the Middle Ages and Early Modern Age. Um, I don't know what this is going to be like. It's also much bigger than I was expecting it to be. Um, it looks like it's a selection of case studies. I really don't know what I'm going to find in this, but it does look interesting. So I'm going to dip into this over the weekend and see if it's helpful at all for my dissertation. And yes, just to look back to what I was saying before, the reason that I say all of that is not just to explain why I haven't posted about my specific research, but also, also to stress the importance of trusting yourself and trying to foster that confidence in your project reminding yourself consistently of why you are working on this thing i found reminders like this hugely useful and it's something i would recommend if you are working on any kind of longer project if you're working on a dissertation if you're working on prolonged research if you're just working on any kind of essay like constantly remind yourself of why you chose to do this particular thing and why you think it's important and um remind yourself of that frequently like even making my maps of why you think it's important you need to believe this. Alright, so I'm going through my second chapter at the moment and just making some edits and I want to write a quick section on Jane Lumley. So Jane Lumley was an incredibly prolific 16th century female writer. She is accredited with having translated the first dramatic work into English by any woman, uh, which is very cool. and. Um, even more remarkably, she was the first to translate Euripides into English of men or women. So I'm going to write a paragraph on her, basically using her as a comparative point to the person I'm talking about. Um, and I wanted to show you, I'm actually really proud of this, so I do want to show you this. I've been using Mila Note to track key information about certain women that I might want to use as comparative points. So I'm basically going to use my page on Jane Lumley to write a paragraph but this is a prime opportunity to give you a tour of my Mila note and show you how I'm using it. I love how it's a visual way of representing information. Like I do love mind mapping but I find that I would never use a mind map as 
a resource when writing so I feel like it's time consuming to print things out and um, whereas Moolah Notes great because you can add lots of different components like maps like videos audio recordings images but I will show you how I have organized it and give you a tour now okay so this is my dissertation board and you can see that it's split into a few sections so we've got families child authors and then other so for example if we click here on families this is the daring family tree and I love how you can make these arrows interactive so every single time you move one of the images the arrow will move with it oh and then you can backlink through so this is my Catherine Daring board Mina Note is basically a way to make a digital mind map and I do enjoy mind mapping I think it's a great way of creating synoptic links between material and looking at something in a new way, like just looking at it with new eyes, with a new perspective, because you can group together information that you wouldn't necessarily usually group together. And then you can make connections. So for example here, this is a board on Catherine Daring, who was the daughter of Mary Daring, who was a um, an early modern uh, musician, composer. Um, so I've got Catherine Daring here in the middle. And then um, on the left here, this is a poem she's written. Um, so I've kind of written some notes next to that um, and then this arrow here connects it to the um, rest of the collection in which I found it. If you pull your arrows onto the images you can connect them and that means that when you oh, that means that when you move the image around um, the arrows follow it which I really This like. is another family tree which I've made and I'm, I've put their handwriting samples, the things that they've written and also the houses of residence. I have referred to this so much whilst writing my dissertation. I love that you can add so many different components. Just look. Okay, so on this family tree, this here is a map. I have linked a map which takes me to the exact location of where the family houses are. Um, like all along here, these are things that you can add. To so I thought I would briefly show you how I actually make one of these boards. Um, it is actually so much fun and so satisfying to make. So you can add loads of different components. I'm adding a video link here um, to the magic carpet scene from Aladdin because I was interested to research the history, trace the history of the magic carpet myth. Um, I've been doing a little bit of research into this just for pleasure. Um, um, so this here is the title page frontispiece to the first English translation of 1001 Arabian Nights, which is where the magic carpet story first appears. However, it's not thought to have been in the original. It's actually um, thought to have been of Galland's own invention. Like Galland was the one to translate 1001 Arabian Nights into French. I also use these arrows just to link things together and I love how it's interactive so when you move the picture the arrows will move too it's very satisfying but yeah you can add so many components in Mila Note I'm just adding a doodle here um here is my beautiful carpet design which I did in a doodle basically just to show you that there is a doodle function on Mila Note and I also added some more images with captions of some early modern carpets because of course everything I look into I link back to early modern at least at the moment because I'm so immersed in this area of study. Um, Milano is amazing I used it actually for my conference presentation in the end uh, which I speak about a little bit later in this video and I had quite a few friends afterwards saying how much they liked it and asking for details on how I made it. I told them Milano and I'm going to tell you Milano too it is very good. I think it's a great it's really great for research especially when you've got a massive sprawling research topic and you're just trying to like draw together all of this information. You you can also share your board with people but if you're working on a collaborative project or something. For my dissertation I'm not using this feature because dissertations are solo projects and not collaborative um, but I actually used Milo Note like years ago when I was planning my shoot for the kindness journal which I brought out like four or five years ago and I shared the project brief with the rest of the team and we were all able to add to it so that was really useful. If you want to try Mila Note and I would highly recommend it like I'm using it so much at the moment it is completely free to sign up and you can use it for free with no time limit there's no like one week free trial so if you do want to give it a go there's a link in the description box where you can sign up um anyway i'm actually going to get to writing that paragraph on jane lumley uh, using the information that i've compiled on Mila Note.
process of transferring some pumpkin puree into jars and look what I've done. I just put it in the side of the fridge and it just fell out. Oh, that's so silly. I think it should be... Okay, that's actually come out okay. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. So I've got 10 minutes till I've got to leave for my train. So in the meantime, I'm just gonna quickly get started on making a presentation. We've got to present in a conference alongside everyone else on our strand, which is really fun. So we get to hear about everyone's research and what they've been uh, working on. And it's a week before our dissertation is due. So um, we have some time to get some feedback, but also it's basically a fully fudged um, finished project at that point. Um, so I made like an outline of my conference speech recently, like last week, and um, I'm going to work on it this weekend, but I won't have my computer. And I actually love this monitor for um, like making presentations because you can put the script on one side and then you can put the presentation on the other side and then like drag in images. So that's what I'm going to do and just like get the images all lined up and then I can work on the presentation when I'm at home. So I'm sorry that I will have blurred this, but this is what I will do. And um, so I have like them both side by side. Okay, I do actually need to go I'll probably warm with my train. Honestly, at this point, I always expect myself to be running for a train. I don't think I've ever taken the walk to the station and not been in a rush, but I did manage to make it. I always managed to make the train. I just did some reading on the train. I always like to have some critical essays downloaded PDF form on my iPad so that I can read them when I'm traveling. And then my sister picked me up from the station and we went to Five Guys for dinner, which was so fun. Um, and. It also felt like ages since my sister and I had caught up and spent time together, um, what with me being away, so this was really lovely. And of course we made full use of the free refills on the soda machine. This is always very exciting and makes me feel a bit like a kid because we always wanted to try these when we were younger and I don't think we ever did as kids. Just finished going through my introduction and cutting it down and now I need to type up the changes. I think I might go on a quick walk though first. It's 5 to 12 and this morning I was just explaining my dissertation to my mum because I find it really helpful to explain um, arguments aloud to see where the flaws are. Um, because obviously your goal in an essay is to convince and so I'll often like present my essay or argument to a family member and then see if they're convinced.
I just got back from my walk and I'm now going to type up the changes to my introduction that I made this morning. Also, um, for my birthday, my sister got me this. It's a keyboard and it sounds so nice. Like, I need to connect it. It's called the banana keyboard. If you listen. Oh, I also got myself a peach kombucha. Right, it's now, I want to say it's about 1, one twelve, and I've just cut down my introduction by a thousand words. It's still over, it's now 3,200 words, and I want it to be 2,000 words. I feel like 2,000 words is a good length for an introduction. So then I did some research on marigold flowers. I have a whole section in my dissertation on these and so I did some research into botany in the 17th century to look for some background information and I was just using Mila Note again to compile this information and then straight afterwards I did some more work on the conference presentation script. Oh, look at this. Cleaning, <laughs> cleaning the just car. Just all of the crevices, just ignore the little. Very roomy back here. We've got some guest perfumes. If anyone's a bit peckish. Can't drive in these. Come on, let's see the front of Betty. I've got a little fluffy dice, which makes Claire seasick. Because they just sway up and down. Oh, no, oh you've got sanitizer as well. So, yeah, we need to make sure wow. that our guests feel welcome. Two car sprays. They have the car sprays. <laughs> They're coming into I'm, their own. <laughs> I used to wear car sprays as normal perfume because they smell They're lovely. the only things that Martha would wear as perfume when she was like 13, 14. We've got some ketchup and some barbecue <laughs> sauce if you fancy a yes. nibble. And we've gone for a bit of a coquette vibe here. <laughs> uh, nail glue. And these boys fall off. We've got exactly. these from Mackey's. They're like the Yu Gi Oh! and Samuel collab. Got all like hairbands. Yeah, it's a bit outfit, obviously. As Martha said, here is my mum not wanting to look at the dice as we were driving. And I didn't film the clips while we were out. We just went food shopping and I got some coconut water. I'm back at my desk. I've been working for about an hour and I'm writing up a script for the conference. So far, I've written up the introductory section and the first chapter and I'm currently writing up the second chapter. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this video. I finished the night just by making this roasted tomato soup. The oven actually wasn't working though. I don't know what was wrong with it. So I ended up air frying the vegetables instead. But yes, I headed back to Oxford the next morning and thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that you have more than just a productive week. Mm -hmm.